Hello video people, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff. Do you know, one of the most common questions I get from you guys is, I'm shooting video, but how do I avoid noise in the shadow areas? So let's explore that question and hopefully I'll be able to help. Let's do it. First thing to say is video needs light. It's kind of hard to get around that fact. So a good mindset is to create contrast in your video and use whatever lighting you have to draw focus onto the subject. This allows you to darken shadows and reduce noise. Light the areas that need to be the focus of attention and let the noise be in the shadows. Take this shot for example. Ignoring the fact that the colours are pretty awful in this shot, there is significant noise throughout the frame and that's because we're using just an overhead light and a table lamp. So by turning them off and just using one LED panel with a little bit of diffusion from an umbrella, we no longer have noise on my face, which is, to be honest, what people are going to be looking at, but we do still have noise in the shadow areas. And that's exactly where we want the noise to be. The next thing to bear in mind is that it's really okay to use your camera's ISO. It's really not a taboo to push it up past, say, ISO 5000 if you need to, as long as you're exposing correctly. In fact, I would say I would rather shoot some footage at ISO 12800 and it be correctly exposed and have some visible noise rather than underexposed with a lower ISO. Trust me, things are better this way. And if you've used my first tip, I don't think a little noise will matter. This first clip was shot at the camera's base ISO and I've done my best to pull the exposure up and stretch it out and make it look normal. But as you can see, there's lots of noise. We've also lost lots of dynamic range. Now up at ISO 4000 and things look a lot better. The colors look better, it's a bit cleaner, but it still doesn't have the dynamic range that a clip like this should do. Finally, as promised, we're up at ISO 12800 and by far, this is the best one for me anyway. There is some noise, but it's in the shadows. Most importantly, the clip is exposed correctly using that ISO. Recently, I started re-watching one of my favorite TV series of all time, which is Battlestar Galactica. If you've not seen it, I highly recommend giving it a go and pay special attention to the very beginning. I'm talking about the two-part mini-series that introduces the story. Some of the footage is amazingly noisy, shockingly so. But did I care? No, because the storyline is amazing, the acting is great, and despite the noise, the image still looks really cool. Exposing to the right is a technique that's fairly debated, but personally it's one that I'm an advocate of. The idea is that by overexposing slightly and then lowering your exposure in editing, the end result will be cleaner looking footage. In my opinion, this technique works brilliantly in any kind of log mode because you have a certain amount of extra flexibility with um, changing your exposure in editing. But in standard Rec. 709 modes, I wouldn't recommend it. For me, a huge part of getting all these things that I previously mentioned right in camera is being able to properly see what you're doing. So now I'm going to stress the importance of using a quality monitor. Really good ones will reveal noise in your footage just from having a larger screen alone, but will also make exposing to the right much easier. Of course, we call it exposing to the right because of the way that a histogram is laid out. For video, I always prefer waveforms because it's far easier to tell which part of your image is exposed correctly or incorrectly. All good quality monitors have waveforms. I particularly like Small HD as a company, but I'll put a few good options in the description below. Looking at the three clips where I compared three different ISOs, we can see where a waveform would really help us. The example on the right, you can see the skin tones are exposed at about 50%. Everything else is nice and low at 25 or below. You can see the middle and left examples have much less dynamic range. It's kind of an obvious thing to say, but if you're getting noisy looking footage, then your sensor needs more light. The easiest and most cost effective upgrade in that department is not to go and buy a Sony a7S, but get a wide aperture prime. There are some stunning value options out there. If you're on a tight budget, I'd highly recommend Rockinon slash Samyang lenses. They're well built, they support most lens mounts and they're really well priced. Almost exclusively have large maximum apertures. They're just great. I'll uh, link some of the very best ones below. So to draw some conclusions from the video, I encourage you to create some contrast in your video and draw people's attention 
away from any noisy areas by using lighting. Remember, using higher ISOs these days is not so much of a taboo. It's better to just use it to expose your footage correctly. It will pay off in the end. Experiment with exposing to the right. This works in log very well. It doesn't work with Rec. 709 so well. And remember that a monitor is a really good investment and it will help your video massively. And waveform is my choice for exposing to limit the noise in your video. And if you haven't already, get yourself some really tasty prime lenses. It will make a massive difference to the noise in your video. And as a very last resort, there's always noise reduction software. I like neat video myself. Take this clip, which was shot at ISO 160,000, and let's take a look at an area behind me. Hopefully you can see this noise on YouTube once it's been uploaded, but once I apply the neat video, it looks like this. I've used it subtly here, but the transition is pretty amazing. I highly recommend it. Of course, it's linked below if you want to check out neat video. And that's about it. I have resisted the temptation to tell you to go out and invest in better lighting because I, I think that's a little patronizing, but I will link some very good options for you below uh, if you happen to be into hunt, in the hunt for that kind of thing. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, then I'd love it if you could. The subscribe button is down below or just over my shoulder. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about video on this channel of which, well, this one here is recommended for you and the one below is my latest upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.